Hey guys, my name is Joanna Ruckenstein and I'm an inspirational dream coach working out of Montreal. And today I want to talk to you about something, an analogy that I've developed. And what I want you to do is close your eyes. So please close your eyes or if you don't want to just close your eyes, just like try to take all of your distractions out of your way, turn off the music, turn off Facebook and I really would love if you could listen to what I'm about to tell you. I want you to imagine football. I want you to imagine the Super Bowl, a huge, huge football game. I want you to imagine yourself loving football and you're living in Green Bay and you want to go to one of the biggest football games of the season and you've saved for months to go to this football game and you've been planning it and you've been talking to your friends about it and you've been telling your wife you have to go to this game and we have to bring our son he's gonna love it and I want him to play football as he gets older and it's just gonna be a fantastic experience your wife says okay great honey we're gonna go and it's gonna be fun and I'll get into it and I'll eat chicken wings and we'll go to the tailgate party fantastic so now the time has come it's Sunday it's beautiful weather outside and you you drive two hours to the game you get to the stadium the tailgate party has been going on for hours and people are you're meeting different people people are having barbecues and the tailgate party is like a religion football is totally a religion in the United States 60 percent or more of Americans watch football every single day some people spend five to seven hours watching football every week so I know it's a religion now you get to this football game and you're at the tailgate party, you're having a great time, and then it's time for everybody to go into the stadium. The game is going to start in half an hour. And there's probably about 250,000 people at this game that have come from all kinds of places. Some people even drove from Canada to come to this game. And, you know, football is not so big in Canada. So people, where's the best place to go? The pl best place to go is Green Bay or North Carolina or Florida. And... So you're in the stadium, people are doing the wave, there's hot dogs being passed around. You just imagine how you would feel at any music concert, at any sports event. There's just so much energy going on, you know, like you're just, you're just motivated, you're excited. And, you know, we should all feel like that every day in our lives. But this is the one day you're there, you're having a great time, and you're waiting for your favorite team to come out onto the field. You're waiting for both teams to come out onto the field and see the cheerleaders, it's just a super fantastic, amazing, exhilarating moment. And the team starts running out onto the field and the cheerleaders are jumping up and down and it's just crazy. And the football game finally starts and the game is going amazing. Your team is winning by seven points and you just love it. You just love it. And we're now in the fourth quarter, right? We're in the fourth quarter and it's the last play of the game. And the quarterback, I think it's the quarterback, the quarterback is... He's got the ball and he's running down the field. He's charging towards the end zone. He needs that last touchdown. He wants to make, he wants to score as many points as possible because he's the quarterback. He needs like, this is for his career. He's been doing this for years. This is, this is the defining moment. And he's running down the field and his opponents are charging and trying to protect him and blocking all the, uh, all the people from the opposing team from, from, uh, from, from tackling him and getting him on the ground and grabbing the ball and scoring, right? So the quarterback is running down the field, he's got the ball, and he's moving right, he's moving left, and he just stops. He just stops, he takes the ball, he looks down, he looks up, sort of to the side, and he takes the ball and he throws it on the ground. And the ball sort of bounces to the right, and he just, he sort of shakes his head, he turns around, and he starts walking towards the locker rooms. And the whole stadium, all the players, everybody is like dead silent. They don't know if there's a, a UFO hanging above the stadium with the aliens about to like take over the world. There, people are looking up. People are not sure if it's a terrorist attack. Nobody has any idea what's going on, but nobody can speak because people are in total like disbelief, right? So the coach goes into the locker room and he's like, he's trying to calm himself down. His blood is boiling. He just wants to yell and scream and be like, what the heck were you thinking? But he's like, okay, I got to be cool. Maybe he's hurt. He gets to the locker room. He walks up to the quarterback and he says, son, are you okay? 
what, what happened? Why did you just walk off the field like that? Are you hurt? Do, you, do we need to call a doctor? Like, you got to tell me. Why did you just walk? Why didn't you tell me what was going on? He's like, coach, no, I'm not hurt. Everything's fine. You know, physically, I'm fine. I just, um, I don't want to talk about it. And the coach is like, what do you mean you don't want to talk about it? Is like, what just happened? I need to know what just happened. You know, I, and I won't get mad at you. I promise I won't get mad at you, son. Just tell me, confide in me. Tell me what's happened. You know, I'm your friend. I've coached you in some of your hardest times. I've coached you through times when you just wanted to cry and give up. He's like, coach, I don't know how to explain it, but right now, all I want to do is go home. He said, I quit. I want to quit. I just, it's not for me anymore, this football. And he's like, it's not for you anymore, this football. And now he's tried to calm himself down coming to the locker room, but now he's like, I can't. Uh, I have to show my true colors. I'm s he just freaked out. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean you don't want to do football anymore? What do you mean you just quit? How can you do that? How can you do that to yourself? How can you do that to all of us? How can you do that to all your fans, to your team? Your team has been looking up to you. And you've done a great job of motivating them. How in the world can you just say, I don't want to do this anymore? He's like, don't you love football? He's like, coach, I do love football, but I just want to go home with my wife. She's waiting for me in the parking lot with my two kids. We just want to go home and I just want to sort of forget about the whole day. You know, I'm kind of feeling bad right now. I don't need you giving me a hard time. I already feel, I already feel bad, and, but I know this is the right decision. Coach is like, you know this is the right decision. After all the effort that you've put in and become one of the best football players with coaches all over the land wanting to recruit you on their team, and you know how good you are, and your teammates know how good you are, and the fans and the people in this stadium right now, and the coach from the other team knows how amazing you are, and you just, you just want to give up. He's like, yeah. And he said, thanks for everything, coach. And he walks out, and he goes, walks through the gates of the stadium, and his wife is waiting for him in the parking lot, and she's standing like this, ready to hug her husband, and just ready to listen to what he has to say, and you know, why he just sort of gave up. Now, I want you to imagine yourself on this field. You're the, you're the quarterback. You have been training for this your whole life. You have been thinking about this. You have been eating this and breathing this and living this and, and talking to people about it and daydreaming while you're at your nine to five job. You've been daydreaming about this and it's, it's not football. It could be anything. It could be wanting to work in construction. It could be wanting to take a trip. It could be wanting to start a new business. It could be wanting to coach people. It could be wanting to go to the Olympics and become an Olympic swimmer or an Olympic weightlifter or a gymnast or a dancer. There's Everybody has something that they've wanted to do so badly. And they, you know, most of us just have never gotten to the point where we wanted it so bad that we just had to do it and nothing could stand in our way. So I want you to imagine that you are the person on this field and you are the person who took this football and threw it on the ground. And what does that football represent? That football re represents your dream. And you walking off the field and leaving your teammates and all of the people in this, in this stadium and all of the fans watching you, millions and millions of people all over the world are watching you walk out. We don't all have a million people in our life. We don't have a million fans in our lives, some of us. But all those people represent what you are giving up, all of the skills, all of the time that you have taken to work or to think up this dream, you're giving up on all of that. When you throw that football down, when you throw that dream down on the ground, that is you giving up on yourself and giving up on your dream. And that is you giving yourself all of the obstacles and telling yourself that you can't do it. It's not the money that matters. It is not people telling you, no, you can't do it this way. You have to do it that way. It's not lack of skill because as soon as you start practicing something, you get better at it. You know, we watch videos of people doing fantastic things and doing backflips. Do you know how many times those people practice doing that? Do you know how much a football player has to endure 
the pain he goes through, the ice baths he has to go through, practicing to be the most amazing football player, and thinking about it, and just thinking of plays, and how he's going to get from, from the, I don't know, the 30th yard line to the end zone, and how much his coach is hounding him, and pushing him, and his teammates, and all the practices he has to go through and the, his diet. I mean, there's so much effort and time and energy and dedication that goes into football and that goes into any sport, any, anything that you do in life takes dedication. And when you take that football, when you take that dream and you throw it on the ground, that is you, that is only you. You're the only one responsible for that. And you don't have the right in your lifetime to do that because you're a role model for humanity and you have to do what is important to you. Times are going to be hard. Times have been hard for me and I will share my story in other videos and you will come to see what I've gone through that just got me to a point where enough is enough. I have to be the Joanna Ruckenstein that I was meant to be, that I know I'm supposed to be. I have to trust my gut. I have to do the things, all the things that I want. And believe me, there are plenty of things that I want to do in my life. And I will do all of them. And I know that I'm going to live a full life of getting everything I want accomplished. Because I've just gotten to a point where I have to. I, I already see it as, as, as having been uh, realized, as already having happened. I know it's already happened. Now it's just a matter of taking the steps to get that dream accomplished but I already see the future as whatever I want as having happened. I did it with my Muay Thai fight. I did it with going to Australia. That was one of the biggest dreams of my life. And I really hope that this football analogy gives you some kind of way to, I want you to relate to my analogy. I want you to see yourself as this football player giving up on his dream, giving up on that game and walking out and leaving all those people to just be like, what in the world did he do? I want you to relate to that. But after you relate to that, you still have to get to a point where enough is enough. It's, it's, I don't know when it's going to happen for you. I would love for it to happen for me and this video or the other videos that I'm going to make to inspire you. But it's only you and and a little like something that just clicks with you some place that you go and you just like oh my god I have to do this you're gonna meet somebody you're gonna be at a concert you're gonna be on vacation you're gonna read a magazine you're gonna watch a television program and it's just gonna turn a light on and be like I have to do this and maybe you won't get all your dreams done because we're still scared of so many things I'm actually scared of public speaking and I'm scared of speaking into this camera but I spoke to the videographer and I'm like, okay, we got to find ways to make me more comfortable because I have to do this. I have to convey my message to the world. It's, it's my life's purpose. And so I did that. And so now I feel more comfortable to speak to you guys. But you have to get to that point where enough is enough. Most people, it takes a horrible disaster. It could be health. It could be losing someone they love that just says, just makes them say, they, it, it puts things into perspective and it makes them go after what they want. And I'm hoping that that doesn't have to happen to you, that you don't get sick or that someone you know doesn't get sick or pass on for you to realize that the time is now. And the reason that you're watching this video is because something is telling you that you have to make a move. You're not watching these videos because you like watching inspiration for the, um, for the entertainment value. No, that's not why, why people watch motivational videos. That's not why people listen to Tony Robbins. People listen to Tony Robbins and people listen to me and any other motivational speaker because there's something that they want to get done. There's something they're scared of and they want that help to be able to go out and do it. And this is why I'm doing it. I want you to feel like I'm your buddy. I want to get you through that hard time and to get to that point, that clicking point, where the light just switches on and you're like, I got to do this. I can't force you to do it, but I sure as hell want to try as hard as I can to help you feel that feeling of desperation. You know, we all feel desperate to make money and that desperation to make money stops us 
from going after we want because we, what we want because we think it's not practical. We're told that being a dreamer is not the right way to go through life. Well, what do you think the Wright brothers who created the airplane were? They were dreamers. There's no reason why a plane should be flying through the sky at 850 kilometers an hour. And I'm sure they went through a crazy amount of people telling them you're nuts and it's never going to happen. But they did it. There is no reason that when you walk into a room and you flip on a switch that a light turns on. And Will Smith talks about it perfectly. He says there's, it's totally unrealistic for you to walk into a room and switch on a light or s turn on a switch and for light to appear. Like, just like that. But of course, it goes through wires in the wall and I know nothing about electricity. I know about energy. But Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the telephone and the man who invented electricity, I forget his name right now, but the Wright brothers, anybody who has invented something completely unreasonable, they got to where they were because they just, they didn't listen to all that negative talk and they just were comfortable with being unreasonable and they just fed off of that energy and they just pushed through it and they got what they wanted. They invented the light. They invented whatever they invented. All successful, crazy successful people have always believed in themselves, trusted their gut, and believed that they were capable of doing something unreason unre unreasonable and unrealistic. And that's what you have to believe. Whoever tells you that being a dreamer is a bad thing, you just have to let them live their life and let them live their fear. But that cannot become your life. You have to be a dreamer. You have to be somebody that wants to do something different. You have to be somebody that wants to do something different in this world. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching today. My name is Joanna Ruckenstein and I truly hope that I've been able to inspire at least one person to realize that their dreams are important and you can live the life that you dream of. Thank you and take care.